Jesus, may you see it. Tonight, I uh, want to be nearly exclusively, well, primarily with the God here. Amen. And uh, so that all of us can have a full understanding of the God that we serve. Yes. Why would you serve God and not know who He is? Hallelujah. So tonight, we're going to unfold the mystery that was hid from generations concerning our great God who's revealed name to the New Testament church is the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, amen. Uh, before I get into my teaching, uh, we were at the city council. Yes. Uh, we didn't have but two minutes each. But I tell you, I'm very proud of Hallelujah. Direct Amen. right at that council. Yes. And I'm telling you, that council just sat back and looked. Yes. So I'm glad at what transpired tonight. Yes. And when we came out, the council meeting wasn't over. But after we said our piece, we left. Amen. And some people left with us. Hallelujah. In the hall, we shook our hands. So we need to hear something like that. I'm thankful for two nights. Yes. Don't you think we are going unnoticed? No, sir. We are not going yes. unnoticed. Amen. And we are doing the work that God has commissioned for each and every one of us to do. Amen. And that's to defend the faith yes. once delivered. Amen. Amen. Again, you might be seated. Uh, let's open up for a foundation. Uh, 1 Timothy 3.16. And I want to let you understand that Paul here is giving a brief verse to something he could wrote, well, actually put in epistle form, mm -hmm. a holy epistle, and that's dealing with the God here. But he comes straight to the point in verse 16. Mm -hmm. And without controversy... Great is the mystery of godliness. Now he starts out by telling you, you won't be able to figure out everything concerning this great God that we serve. Because he said it's not just a mystery, but a great mystery. Yes. Uh -huh. Amen. God was manifest in the flesh. Now we, we can stop right there. Yes. That says it all. God was manifest in the flesh. In other words, God was made flesh. I believe John picks it up in his gospel, yes. uh, the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Amen. So here we see that it's a great mystery and when you try to figure out the complexity of it, you never will because otherwise it wouldn't be a mystery. Amen. A mystery is something that human finite mind can't quite figure out. Yes. But what we have to do, we're going to use foundational scriptures. And the foundation of the God here. Yes. The foundation of the God here rests on about three scriptures. Let's let's go right to uh, Isaiah yes. forty-five and five. Yes. We're talking about foundational. Now, Isaiah 45 and 5. I am the Lord, and there is none else. Now, here the word clearly states, I am the Lord. Now, the Lord, again, is taken from the Hebrew word Adonai, yes. which literally means God. 
So he says, I am the Lord, I am God. Uh huh. And there is none else. Now, you can't go no further than that. <laughs> he says, I am the Lord, there is none else. There's no other God. Uh huh. There's no God beside me. There's no God beside me. Now I want you to have full understanding of this mystery. When you see a passage of scripture, I believe it's found in Revelation, Jesus on the right hand of God, it literally means the personality in accord or in, in sequence with the spirit. Now again, keep in mind, God is a spirit, and a spirit is invisible. Let's turn to Colossians, uh, the first chapter. Yes. Okay, read up in verse 15, I believe. Who is the image of the invisible God? Now, here, image. Image means what? Person. It means person or visibility. Now, Jesus, again, is the visibility of this invisible spirit, who's the image of the invisible God. The firstborn of every creature, for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. Now again you see the singular pronoun him used in the latter part of verse 16. All things were created by him and for him. All things were created by the image of God or the personality of the invisible spirit which is the Lord Jesus Christ. Again Jesus in his personality form, yes. made the invisible spirit visible. Yes. So again, we have to fully understand that now in the context of the Son of God, now we're dealing with a manifestation that you can't quite understand because I said before, you cannot kill a God. So he came down, born of a woman, as flesh and blood or as humanity so that he could fulfill the destiny of the cross and literally die at Calvary. Okay. Now, he died at Calvary as a son of God, but he still was God. But you still can't kill a God. But yet he had to die. Amen. So that's why Paul said, great is a mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. Now again, let's fully comprehend Son of God in the context of Mary's baby. Son of God literally means God incarnate. Now, Mary's baby was in the physical form as a sacrifice or a human being who would make the sacrificial commitment back to the divine spirit which he already was. So when Jesus died at Calvary, it was a human being that died. Though he was God. Now keep in mind. When he prayed on the cross, Father forgive them, that was the humanity praying to the divine spirit, which he was. Now, turn to Romans 8 chapter. We're going to prove. It's only, as a matter of fact, uh, Ephesians 4 and 4, there's one body and one spirit. All right, Romans 8 and 9, and we're going to back up to Ephesians 4 and 4. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is not of his. If you see how... God in Christ is used interchangeably. Yes. If any man had not the Spirit of God yet, the next text he says, any man had not the Spirit of Christ. So he using God and Christ in the same context as the same entity. So the Holy Ghost, 